Hi, this is George Lee, still trying to catch up with this stunning information that uh, the Queen of England is the cousin of Adolf Hitler uh, and all of it, and Adolf Hitler is also the cousin of Winston Churchill and all of that is the running of World War II for profit. Okay, and that is the corrupted British royals and they're all over the place and that is Commoner Kate, nearly naked and that's how she got into the Queen's role uh, next up. Okay, so here we go. And I've been trying to get this to play and to get that stunning information out. <coughs> This is uh, Jim Fenster, your host on The Real View, with my very special guest today, one of the... So this is also in a context that the Shin is the launch of the Bush family. These guys don't discuss it, but I want you to know that the Bush family uh, went across to America in the late 1930s, uh, and that was with Martin Bormann, with Scozerny, Hitler's bodyguard, uh, and with uh, the uh, Scherf family name so that they could then change their name and they are the parentage through Avril Harriman and all of the Harriman Brown lineage that was trading with the enemy in World War II that is the Tyson families and I want you to listen carefully to all these interviews if you possibly can The world's great muckrakers the author of some of the most controversial books of our time, now living in the UK to circumvent death attempts on him in New Zealand. It's a great pleasure to have back on the show Greg Hallett. Mate, welcome back. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. That's great. This year, 2012, was a very interesting year. I said that 2007 was a year of cons, and the cons have just increased and got larger and larger until we have to look at what is the source of the cons and it appears that the source of the cons is the mafia and that the mafia has infiltrated all of the governments and all of the government departments so what i've been doing is trying to correct this and what i've found is that the british monarchy is fake it is flat white royal it is a fraud it is an invention of tradition, and the United Kingdom has not had a true monarch since 1852. Buckingham Palace, the Palace, Buckhouse, aka the firm, have given very strong indications through their reactions of a legitimate and superior claim to the throne of England. May 2010, I gave a talk and I had a few copies of The Hidden King of England done, just like 20 copies and that was in Scotland and there was a reporter there from a newspaper from London who was based in Scotland then on the 2nd of July 2010 I delivered a copy of the book to Max Clifford and Associates in Soho in London the idea was obviously to, to get it promoted and published. Max Clifford turned out to be a British intelligence agent who was covering as a PR agent for newspapers, books, film, and he claims to have been the first one to promote the Beatles. And it appears that he got the book to Queen Elizabeth II and then a plan was developed to obscure the book. So from July 2010, I would have had another, at least another four assassination attempts. 
There was a phone hacking scandal running from about March 2010 in England. And Max Clifford on the 9th of March 2010 had been paid out £1 million pounds by Rupert Murdoch from News of the World. And it appears that in England they have something called the Queen's Media Circus where the Queen has her ringmasters who are uh, Rupert Murdoch and Max Clifford run scenarios where the newspaper people are actually the news and they create distractions. So, so far in this phone hacking scandal, at least 50 people have been arrested. There's at least another 100 police operations going on in related cases and none of the true stories are coming out and you know that the PR people and the, the media circus ringmasters are running out of stories when they become the stories. So the distraction that, that Rupert Murdoch and Max Clifford are running is that they don't want the story to get out that Queen Elizabeth II is fake and they want to keep her untarnished until she gives up the throne. Giving up the throne to William, presumably? To the Windsor family giving up the throne entirely, but because they're a fake royal family, the Commonwealth heads of government have not been informed of a superior claim since the 6th of March 1997. So in making a claim to the throne, we wrote a registered letter and sent it on the 24th of June 2010 to Prime Minister David Cameron. His office said that they maybe had it and then they didn't have it. And then I went and presented a copy of the letter with a covering letter to 10 Downing Street with them being forewarned on the 2nd of August 2010 and they refused to accept the letter. And then the, they advised me to post it from the Army and Navy stores, which is about 15 minutes walk away past um, uh, Westminster and Big Ben. So we did that and we documented the whole thing, we have it on film. In fact, if I do this... You have a letter to be delivered here to go through the um, process of going to the Sultan office and the back of the Army and Navy stores. Who won't take it here? The back of the Army and Navy stores? Victoria Street. Victoria Street. So I can deliver it there and I'll deliver it straight here? Well, I won't necessarily deliver it straight here, but it'll go into the system. Okay. If no letter is expected, then we'll... Oh, the, the letter is expected. Well, it's not published around in the auction. So the back of the Army and Navy stores on Victoria Street, round the back of the Army and Navy store, Victoria Street. Victoria Street, thank you. Yes. All right, because, it, you know, they knew what was coming. They knew the true royal family had a claim to the throne. So 10 Downing Street was refusing it. And here I am walking past Big Ben. And, and the Queen Elizabeth II Conference Centre. But I can't get a conference with her. Although I represent the true King of England, she doesn't seem to want to talk to me. I wonder why. Looking quite dapper, may I say. Cameron Prime Minister, 10 Downing Street, London, SW1A2AA, with stamp. And here we have the covering letter. And then we posted it on the 24th of June, and we tried again to deliver it. And it was refused at 10 Downing Street at quarter to five today, 2nd of August, and here's the original letter that we sent. So we're trying to arrange a meeting between the Exilite King and Prime Minister David Cameron, requesting that he notify Queen Elizabeth II that there is a legitimate challenge to the throne.
So all of these videos Time now is 5.30pm on the 2nd of August 2010 Royal Mail, we are about one and a half kilometres from 10 Downing Street and actually talking to 10 Downing Street security guards at around 11 p.m. that night. So that's all. That's all documented. The truth is always stranger than fiction. What you to? Oh, we don't want to just a holiday movie. Just <laughs> mucking around in a suit, no one ever does it overseas, you know. <laughs> so we've got this fantasy going that the um, British royal family are the wrong royal family. And that's the premise of, right. that's the premise of the holiday movies, right? So, so this is number six video for uh, all of the mobsters that have now taken over these websites. Yeah, this is the last one he made before he was disappeared and Jim Fetzer could not find him again uh, and Fetzer has no videos uh, that are uh, uh, on his websites that can be associated with Greg Hallett's output and that's why the whole of his Greg, uh, Greg Hallett's output has now been chopped and changed and cut into 20 second, uh, 52 second segments just to show that the Freemasons are in charge of the stealing of the whole world for the German monarchs and all of their subsidiaries uh, right into the uh, Austro-Hungarian river valleys that are the launch of all the great wars and the Shin is not a secret it's shared with all the people the uh, people of England I don't know if the Scots get the same information uh, as the tyrants do but uh, that is the know-nothings in England and all of my friends uh, Gordon Bowden John Patterson, that's Gordon Bowden who was gladly shaking the hands of the Millie Band uh, socialist leaders yeah, and he knew, knew full well that those two Millie Bands are both on the committee of 300 until I reported it and then he'd been taken off it yeah, Ed Balls is still there and Yvette Cooper is still there too and it's a massive mafia operation for only those elite chosen ones families that were the founding of the American democracy which is the Shin and the operation to get the Nazi Germans into the mind control centers at, uh, I forget what it is, the cold Spring Harbour mind control places and everywhere where the eugenics are practiced from Guantanamo right into the American democracy to this very day same families and all of them are led by the uh, Sheriff family that is now called Bush and were the presidents and are the friends of Hitler's bodyguard Skozerny they are the friends of uh, Martin Bormann and they are the friends of uh, Joseph Mengele lovely warm syndicate yeah and the bones go in the ovens and the gold comes out in blocks yeah, well what we're suggesting is that Queen Victoria actually had a child when she was 14 okay. and she was married to blind prince George of Cumberland who became King George V of Hanover and the child was born in Carlisle Castle and I've been approached by a gentleman in Portugal who claims to be the lineal descendant of Queen Victoria's first born son so chop it up into segments cover up everything you don't want them to hear and this is not actually Hallett Report number 5 I've got all of that archived elsewhere on my computer uh, and unfortunately I can't take a picture of that with my camera but I could show you on the camera screen what I want you to know that is the sensational thing that has taken me nearly two weeks to track down as a 
as a spoken statement. So let me show you now. So he's got he's got about 30 raw marks to prove it. So we're not sure if we're making a fantasy or we're actually beginning. Right then. So there's Greg Hallett. Okay. And there is him. And it says Jim Fetzer. It's an hour and a half video and so this is Fetzer usually breaks his videos up into two segments. You're listening to Hallett Report number six now, uh, but what you've got there is a statement that, yeah, this is the world of truth. Jim Fetzer, it's the world of truth.net, Hallett Report number five. It's an hour and a half video with pictures and video insert. It really proves the true royal family and the current one is an absolute fraud. On that video, I've got a report, in. so they're making number six, and he's referring back to uh, number five, okay? And number five is what I tried to find on the listings on the now completely dismembered web pages for Greg Hallett's formerly orderly website that no longer shows the pictures of the illegitimate royals, cult, uh, Kensington Palace and the hubs for Princess Diana. Yeah? And there is Jim Fetzer. So the, the British Royal is absolute is completely illegitimate twice. That's quite stunning, Greg. All by itself, all by itself. Greg Hallett, yeah, all by itself. You know there's just a plethora of information here. And again I want to say that I want this information out and it's the dark side because the incumbent fake flat royal invention of tradition royal family is a fraud and they're up to all sorts of sexual murderous and drug trafficking tricks wait for this this is the bit that i'm trying to catch on camera for nearly two weeks now part of the result of the shin in the middle of the shin was to turn the british empire into a mafia operation that's with the yellow highlights in the middle yeah was to turn the British Empire into a mafia operation which the people of England really know that it is which included World War II and the training of Adolf Hitler in 1912 from February to November 1912 and it turns out that Adolf Hitler is first cousin with Queen Elizabeth II Jim Fetzer then says Hitler was a cousin of Queen Elizabeth II? Question mark. Greg Hallett Lionel Nathan Rothschild was the father of King Edward VII, who was the father of Winston Churchill, who was the father of Queen Elizabeth II, and Lionel Nathan Rothschild was the father of Alois Hitler, Hitler's father, and then Adolf Hitler. Yet yeah, this morning I've learned that all the families that are in the Shin and are being whinged about by America now, they include the uh, Gabals, and that will be Betty Grable in the ancient myths and the families that are the fascists right into the making of those uh, Vicar of Dibley uh, uh, comedies and that Officer Dibble and Dibley they are the Scherf family bloodline and Bertie Wooster's bloodline right into the American uh, fascist networks, all of them out of Germania, yeah, and the Nazis that lost the war allegedly, and the Bushes just swept into the power base, and they have now taken it over completely, and many of the relatives are from Great Britain, uh, which is absolutely ironic, and on those family trees and on the videos I've seen this morning they are named as people uh, that are uh, the uh, the uh, uh, cover that is Hutchison and that is my next door neighbours in Kelso. Adolf Hitler was trained in Britain in Tavistock there and or the Tavistock. So, so actually Queen Elizabeth's father was first cousins, Winston Churchill was first cousins with Adolf Hitler and Adolf Hitler was trained in Britain in the Tavistock there and all the Tavistock which was in Ireland up until 1920, 1921 until the Civis Irish Civil War 
and the South gained its independence. What I'd like to point out, it shows very clearly in the video, Prince William is very definitely the son of King Juan Carlos of Spain. Okay, that is the information that I've been trying desperately to find for nearly a fortnight now. And this is the wrong video, but it's labelled as number five, which is cited there as the source of all of those statements in that discussion by the same two uh, very methodical analysts uh, and newsmongers. A new royal family, but we're beginning a new royal family. And we have to put up with this all of the time. And you've seen when my videos are made here, uh, nothing troubles them. There is no stammering, there is no choking. All of it is done by the powers that be, like the crashing of me making of yesterday's video, episode 3 on the Sheriff family. Are we treasonable for being, or is treason out of the question, or do we negotiate? So I presented a letter to. Um, Prime Minister David Cameron today asking for a meeting between the Exilarch and Queen Elizabeth II to see what we're going to do about transfer of assets because Buckingham Palace is rightfully his. Um, you won't get a lot from me, you really have to go to the court because she's actually had a say. Well, um, that So it's not going to play ball, so we might as well just continue with making revelations. David Cameron and, and the ex life are actually six cousins oh, really? as well. Oh, really? they're, they're, the police here, yeah. um, they're not on top of the government. Yeah, you're cold. Are you, are you City of London Police as well? Right. All police though are their bosses, the Queen. Yeah. We are, we are employed by the state, yeah. not by government. Yeah. Well, whatever comes in the government, my boss is the, the, the Queen is your boss. So there's the cover for Sheldon oh. Bush. I'm hey, trying to get a meeting with her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to get a meeting with her. You might be tough. You might be tough. I've been to her since 1997. She's aware of the situation. And she's aware of the Royal Marks. And, uh... <laughs> Probably right. It's, it's undeniable that we delivered the letter to Ken Downing Street, claiming as the rightful heir to the throne of England. The important thing is that they had it by 30th of June 2010, and very definitely by, say, the 5th of August 2010. So then they studied it and realised that it was a legitimate claim to the throne by the end of the month, 1st of September. The British royal family tends not to acknowledge challenges to the throne, and the way you see a challenge to the throne is by their royal reaction. And the British royal family's royal reactions are through births, deaths and marriages. So the first thing they did was instruct Prince William to get engaged to uh, the commoner, Kate. And there was even betting in Ladbrokes about their engagement from about the uh, 16th of October uh, 2010. And then they were finally engaged and then they were married and that was all a distraction. And they had various assassination attempts, they had the book printed and they absolutely stuffed up the printing so pages were backwards and pages... Really? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah absolutely out of order. Yeah, yeah, I've got it here. You, 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 perhaps you should have had it published abroad? Uh, well, I, I'm settled now, but counting in order, page 108, page 166, 165, 164, 163, 162, 161, well, that's 59, 58, 57, oh, ridiculous. 
clearly deliberate. I mean, you know, publishers don't make mistakes like that by accident. Oh, right? no, I know. I and then uh, right down to counting, counting down backwards, 111 meets page 167. I've never seen that before. I've never seen that much sabotage. So I got another print run and then they, they printed the color pages black and white. Really? Yeah, yeah, and then they chopped the head off the book. Uh, You're kidding me. Yeah, no, 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 four, four, four sabotage print runs. And then another one, page set up. No glue, well, not enough glue. <laughs> <laughs> this is completely outrageous. And then the guy who did the printing sold the building he was working in. But no one even knew he owned the building. So it looks like he was given a building for book sabotage. That's terrible, Greg. That's yeah. absolutely terrible. So, I mean, not <coughs> it's not merely unprofessional. It's clearly deliberate sabotage. No doubt about it. <laughs> yeah, you can make a mistake once. But I mean, I published a lot of books, and those things don't happen. They just they don't happen. Sure enough, sure enough. Publishers are, uh, are very, very careful. So what's happened basically is that the, the royal family has absolutely confirmed everything that I've been saying that they are illegitimate. And this has resulted from me presenting the book to Max Clifford, who's a British intelligence agent, to Ken Downing Street, obviously the Prime Minister is a British intelligence agent, and that getting to Queen Elizabeth II, their royal reaction has been to change the laws of succession to the throne of England which is the biggest law change in 324 years. Greg Hallett is explaining the illegitimacy of the current royal family for the UK. Greg, you are explaining how, for the first time in 300 years, there's been a change to the laws of secession to the royal, to the crown. Yeah, so our claim to the throne is so strong that they are attempting to change the laws of succession to the throne of England going back at least to 1688 and maybe beyond that because they realise that going by the current laws of succession to the throne of England there are new monarchs of England. Now Greg, it surely even if they change the law now that wouldn't affect the fact that her reign has been illegitimate. I mean they can't change history. You haven't had an illegitimate reign here for some time now. Surely if they were to change the law they're doing this as an ad hoc measure to try to defeat the legitimacy of your claim, but it seems to be very dubious. It is extremely dubious, <coughs> and they've backdated the claim to the 28th of October 2011. Now, I'll tell you how that came about. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were doing a royal tour of Australia. So there's Prescott Sheldon who was born in Columbus, Ohio in 15th to the 29th of October 2011. And in that, on the 28th of October 2011, Queen Elizabeth opened Chogham, which is the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. That was a two day meeting that went from the 28th to the 30th of October um, 2011. The first thing on the agenda was the change to the succession laws which had to be agreed upon by the Prime Ministers and leaders of the Commonwealth nations and their various subsidiaries. Their importance has always been in precise relationship to their relevance. Always being attuned to the issues of the day and always looking to the future with a sense of vision and practice. That's Wadsden Manor and how much it costs to get in there. This is the funders and the planners of the great plot to take over the whole world, led by the banking dynasties, and that for a laugh is the folk that were the first to go over border control in America 
uh, and they are called uh, uh, they are called uh, they are critical called action to match in other words, uh, in classic uh, regal understatement, she's saying if you want this to amount to anything, you better get on and actually deliver something. She also went on, and really her final word before she opened it, to uh, make a statement which was quite curious, George. Have a listen to it. She but because the Queen was there, they all went, yes. But none of the leaders of the Commonwealth, none of the Commonwealth heads of government, their Prime Ministers, were informed that there is a legitimate and even a superior claim to the throne of England. Rather, Prime Minister David Cameron had gone round to all of the heads of government in the Commonwealth nations and said to them, we want to change the laws of succession to the throne of England and we want to modernise them. And the way we're going to modernise them is we're going to allow older daughters to have precedence over younger sons and to allow monarchs to marry Catholics. And what they didn't say was that only the children of the current Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, would be eligible for the throne of England. And that negated our superior challenge for the throne. She also went on, and really her final words before she opened it, to uh, make a statement which was quite curious, George. Have a listen to it. She claimed to be quoting an Aboriginal proverb. We are all visitors to this time, this place. We are just passing through. Our purpose here is to observe, to learn, to grow, to love. And then we return home. Now, I think everybody in the room there read that as being a statement of mortality. The proverb relates to life and death, nothing more than that. The returning home means to die. And there is a sense that uh, this is a woman in her 80s reflecting on her own mortality, on what, what a life is worth. And that negated the superior challenge to the throne. Well, if it were adopted and if it were actually legitimate under the laws, I mean, this is really quite a blatant effort to con you know constrict any prior any claim about prior illegitimacy i mean it's, it's so blatant it's greg sir, sir, how has the public responded to this has it become an issue well the public is is ignorant because the books have been sabotaged i've had uh, several murder attempts and i've i've been financially raided uh, actually by the nazis Yeah, that's um, the over the last 15 months and I've been exiled out of my own country I've been denied a lawyer etc and now it appears that there's a massive drug deal going down which began with Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip's royal tour of Australia from the 19th and 29th of October 2011 and here's how it went down Prince Philip and, and Queen Elizabeth are the notorious heroin traffickers behind the Mr. Asia heroin trafficking syndicate that went down right through the 70s and resulted in a whole lot of murders, including the murder of Lord Louis Mountbatten, who was the person who arranged Prince Philip's marriage to Queen Elizabeth, which was the extortion marriage of the century. Lord Louis Mountbatten found evidence of the true king, and he used that on Prince Philip's behalf to become engaged to Princess Elizabeth and Princess Elizabeth was sold by her parents into marriage to cover up the illegitimacy of the British monarchy. So Queen Elizabeth is essentially a human trafficking slave and to maintain the front of the legitimacy of the British monarchy, she will do absolutely anything that Prince Philip wants. Now, Prince Philip has been filmed uh, in a parade with the Nazis, which was actually a funeral parade, but Prince Philip is a Nazi, and he's actually the leading Nazi in England. He is the head of a DVD, the Deutsche Werdekunstdienst, which is the enemy within 
for them the war never ended. So it's the Nazis taking over England and the United Kingdom post World War II and the biggest leap forward they ever had was Prince Philip extorting a marriage for Princess Elizabeth. And since then, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip have done absolutely everything they can to destroy the United Kingdom. And that included putting a pedophile and child murderer, Ted Heath, in as Prime Minister from 1970 to 74. And in 1973, he signed up the United Kingdom to the European Union and in doing so introduced 20% VAT, which is a tax on everything, and all of that money goes to the European Union. And that has been starving England, so that England, England is now absolutely just on its knees. There was a pub culture and over, over half the pubs have closed down. It was a music venue culture and over half the music venues have closed down. That's a cultural disaster. It is, it, is, it is annihilation of a country. It's an annihilation of the culture. And Prince Philip has used that influence through all of the Commonwealth countries in an attempt to destroy those as well. So then we had to look for a Nazi who was involved in pedophilia in New Zealand, uh, who was also involved in drug trafficking and murders, and then perhaps even they would be Prince Philip's agent in New Zealand. And that turned out to be Peter Williams QC. Peter Williams QC is a Nazi heroin trafficking, murdering, mass murdering pedophile. Now he is leading the working group on the laws of succession to the change of the throne of England. Right? He yeah. is, is he now? Yeah. Now, Peter this, Wilson, Greg, when you say we work in group, does that mean these have, the laws have not yet been passed and that in, the, in their implementation is still in the works? The laws have not yet been passed. The implementation is in the works. And on the 28th of October 2011 at Chogham at the um, Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, with Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip present, New Zealand was chosen to chair the working group on the change of the laws of succession to the throne of England. New Zealand was chosen. The highest ranking woman in New Zealand is Dame Margaret Baisley. Dame Margaret Baisley was the bag lady carrying the money and the guns for the murders, the assassinations, in the Mr. Asia heroin trafficking ring, which was run by Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth. And Peter Williams was running uh, the Mr. Asia heroin trafficking ring. He was a lawyer. His client was Terry Clark, who was the on the streets head of the Mr. Asia heroin trafficking ring. And he ended up living in Kensington. And he would have meetings in Green Park in the centre of London. Now you've got um, you've got Kensington Palace and you've got Buckingham Palace, and joining those you've got Green Park, St James's Park, Hyde Park, Kensington Palace Park. They're all joined. And the intelligence meetings and the payoffs used to happen generally in Green Park. Now Green Park was only a few hundred metres from where um, Terry Clark lived. And Terry Clark was Peter Williams' client, and Terry Clark's girlfriend, Karen Sowick, was Peter Williams' junior lawyer. So that was a living position. Peter Williams' junior lawyer was the girlfriend of Terry Clark, and they were living next to Buckingham Palace running the heroin trafficking. That's really outrageous, it's, Greg. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? Now, I got none of this could be done without the Queen's awareness. Of consent. Now, I actually got all this information. I got it from a, a tip from a security intelligence service agent who was actually the same person who had altered the files. <coughs> and he was an expert in photocopying or psychostyling things so that he couldn't really read the information. However, um, you could still read it if you did things like held it up to the light and still the impression of, of words and <coughs> I managed to get these documents from the Auckland Law Society 
and then I laboriously tucked them out and I found that um, by comparing two or three documents which was actually to do with the striking off from the Law Society of Ed Larry and uh, Billy Boyd, uh, George William Stewart Boyd. Private, 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 private. The payment schedules for the murders. And this included the payment schedules for Lord Louis Mountbatten on the 27th of August 1979 and also the payment schedule for Margaret Thatcher's lover. Now he was murdered the 30th of March 1979 and the, the, the payment schedule started on the 28th of March 1979. So the payments for these murders were done 10 days before the murders. So that Margaret Thatcher's lover's murder, Harry Nee, his payment schedule was not on that. And just a little side detail, that was done because the judge, Andrew Spate, who was in charge of it, had been compromised by the Security Intelligence Service because on a yacht, uh, moored off Carroll Island, he had found his wife having sex with a, a guy on the boat next door, so he shot the man's arm off. So that's how the judge was compromised, and that's how the payment schedules for Erin E's murders are missing from the file. But there was the payment schedule for Lord Louis Mountbatten's murder, and Peter Williams, who became Peter Williams QC, who was Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth's agent in New Zealand, he financed the murder out of the money in the safe. Um, but the payments were made 10 days before the murders. A little, little break and get back on topic. So no, it's very difficult not to be on topic, no matter what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, sir. So what we've got is Peter Williams, who has funded, funded the murder of Lord Louis Mountbatten. And we could probably do an entire show on the payment schedule for the murders and how it went down and who was involved. You have a very good idea. I'll take that as read that uh, we have funded the uh, assassination of Lord Louis Mountbatten from New Zealand involving Ed Larry and Kevin Ryan, Sina the warrior princess, her uncle, he was a lawyer in New Zealand, uh, living within three miles. The Williams and he was actually the leading fundraiser for the IRA in the Southern Hemisphere. So he actually did the payment to the IRA for the murder. So Peter Williams QC, the leading heroin trafficker in New Zealand, murderer, the number of murders has actually kept the jockey club and the, the number of murders he's done is 150. So going back to the change of laws of succession of the throne of England, yes. as Lord Chancellor to the Royal family, my role is actually to change the laws when necessary. So because Queen Elizabeth II has not been acknowledging our claim. So there now is the bloodline that was taking you through the other day because I can no longer access that video to turn the sound off or the playing of it off when I want to. It's not got the information on his Hitler being a full cousin of both Churchill and the Queen of England. Yeah, and that's the launching of the wars against his cousins, as it always is, right through into Kaiser Wilhelm's life. So, back onto this bloodline tree, and there on the far left now of George Scherf's tree showing 1900 people is Ronald Murray, Thomas Kingsmill Abbott, Rhoda Sophia Kernow, and on we go, Lydiard Nancy Kernow Abbott, yeah. Max Vickers Jones, Onione Noni Abbott, yeah. You get Abbott and Cus Costello, and they're from Hess. Casello. Yeah, huge pistic. They are fellows of the whole of the European, they are freemen of the Europe German republics. Yeah, and it is absolutely massive. Joy Askew. Dorothy Isabel Newell. Let's now just speed it up a bit and ignore the privates, there's the Colonel Sheriffs, yeah, that are the Bushes, Charles Ladner Colonel, 1863 to 
yet very unlikely to have uh, died in a uniform. Lewis Pentreath Colonel, and that could well be the Curzon uh, and crossing the River Jordan joke for the Bullingdon boys with the Curzons in them. Bertha Godolphin Colonel, and that is the Godolphin Racecourt horse that caused so much excitement in winning the uh, races at the uh, Longchamps Racecourse in France. Margaret Isabel Priddle and the launch of the Riddle families as Governor Generals of Nova Scotia were the biggest explosion in world history apart from uh, the Japanese ones occurred. Okay. Phoebe Esther Curnow, William Bill Henry Pontreath Kinsella and all the places that I've been for uh, with my children all across Ireland that is Kinsale where George Osborne's family lived right close up to the boss at the Robert Gordon's University who's a Nazi he's uh, uh, he's one of the most uh, favourite well loved uh, Vice Chancellors in British University uh, currently, and his name is uh, I've forgotten, he's still my Facebook friend. Uh, and all of them have massive estates in Ireland. There is Mavis Lucy Anderson, Henry Kinsella, Beryl Ladner Colonel, Lewis Charles Pentreath. These are the families that are the friends of the Bush family and their relatives before they changed their name from Sheriff. Okay? Adeline Marianne Sadler, and I cannot now turn off that video, uh, and the only way I can turn it back on, but that's not Hallett Report number five as it appears when you click on their totally dismembered websites, and that is so that you cannot find the information that is so sensational. Marion Sadler, Kinsella's again, Pentreath, Lewis Charles Pentreath Kinsella, 1911 to 1979. On we go. Sadler's again, Roger Pentreath Kinsella, private, 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 Julius Henry Scherf, Eva Margaret Bergman, Mer Berman, Robert, Kenneth Robert Lowsley, and this is now the lows of the dark plain world and the Frankfurt ghettos and the Wellesleys joining their name for the Duke of Wellington, who also has his massive castle in the Irish uh, communities, but he's in Northern Ireland, which Queenie still owns. And that is the Ulster scams and all of the Hillsborough disasters because that is Hillsborough, where she has a palace in Ulster. Kenneth Robert Low Wesley, yeah, all one word, L-O-W-E-S-L-E-Y. That's the Duke of Westminster is born Wells Wesley, at uh, Wellesley, in the Austrian nobility. In 1914, when they were stripped of their titles as war criminals, Colin Robert Hadley, yeah, and even the fabulous Bergman actresses, yeah, that sing about loyalty to their countries in North Africa, are in the syndicate. James Alfred Mott, yeah, that's the Mott and the Thingabee, uh, Mott and Bailey castles all over the world. Rose Solander Scherf. Uh, on we go. Grenville Trelawney, Sheriff. Dorothy Elma Pivetta, still got battery life left. Charles Henry, Sheriff. Private, 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 private. Colonels. Colin Vivian Danga, Carmen Trevelyan, Pentuath, Sheriff. Charles Colonel, Sheriff. Private, private, private. Christopher, William Christopher Josephson, another launch of a new family bloodline, Ada Beryl Doherty, 
Eric Joseph Dorahi, Dorahi. Oh, that's the Dorothy joke in the other direction. Anna Lily Mardell, Alfred Mardell, Christina Ethel Mardwell, and that is Sale, and that is the Sales that help Commoner Kate steal the kingdom. Spelt differently, but all of it is a master plan. Arthur Herbert Mardell, Olive Gloria Fermor, uh, Daphne Beryl Sewell, Sale, yeah? Phyllis Sale, Henry Burley Sewell, Sale. And she's now the daughter-in-law of Ian Botham. Heinrich Burley Sewell, Ina Hyde, Hyde Sewell Fletcher for the porridge comedies and Fletch and the other Germanic guy that is Grotty. Yeah, and I've got all of them. Pin now, and he met me on Carlisle Station where Queen Victoria had her babies. Kelvin McLaren, Phyllis Anna Sewell, Stanley George Wooster. Here we go. To wit, to woo, Greg Hallett. Isn't it funny? Winifred. Oprah Winfried, Vaughan Winfried, that is St Boniface in Frankfurt, and the launch of the Christmas fake. I think the batteries have gone. <laughs> maybe not. Okay. Uh, Stanley George Wooster, Winifred Lucille Wooster, Saywell, Connor Cates, and uh, very unfortunate friends who are so poor that they have to become madams in the prostitution dens. Elias Jasper Saywell, Anna Alvina Saywell Sher, yeah, the Bush family bloodline, Malcolm James Dewitt de Wooster, Andrew Bruce Saywell, Irene Elizabeth, not Swinford, for Butlins and John of Gone and Donald and Hillary's bloodline, but Swinfield, Elias Jasper Jop Saywell, Elias Jasper Jop Saywell Jr. and O Mr. Jessica Mary Porter, who's related to the Tapping family. Yeah. Uh, and I think we still got batteries, but maybe not. I think it should be going red if we've still got batteries and life in it. Oh, it's still going. Elias, so do you get it? That's Old Mr. Porter featuring Will Hay, possibly of Kinfawns and the most rich people in Scotland. Uh, and that is Brian Souter of Egypt. Yeah, and the Pharaoh bloodlines and the Swinfields are absolutely sinister that is John of Gaunt and the marriages uh, between the Swinfords uh, who are the Butlins jockeys also and they die at the age of 60 for Pisa uh, next is Elias Jasper Jop Saywell Jr Jessica Mary O Mrs Porter yeah, and all my wife's family's favourite movies, Lewis Herman Saywell, Alma Lydia Maud Campbell's are coming, 1906 to 36, and then God got them. Christine, Christian, Henrik, Frederick, Connor, Chef, Kristen, Amelia, Wagner's, yeah, for the Norse myths that keep everybody terrified on a Thursday and that title has been stolen and has become the Austrian flag with Thor's hammer and God's sickle on it. Next, <laughs> yeah, Alice Renee Goldsmith and that is Commoner Kate's family, that is her mother, that is Princess Diana, the bastard of the goldsmith, the meat eater. Yeah, John Sewell, Cecil Claude Sewell, 
Robert Clement Sewell, and on and on we go. Still got batteries. Private, 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 private. Herman Datlef Schumacher, you've heard of them? Have their heads caved in in an off piste accident, God? That was clumsy of you. Matilda Tilly, Fanny Chef, Fania, since Pizzo. Yeah, and the fan that all of them carry to the operas and the gods are sitting in the top row. Yeah, and the humans eh, get in for free. And it's absolutely decrepit, crooked and treasonous all over the world because these are the Nazis that were defeated in the war. Baden Keith Scherf Carol Stevens Giddings, Lord Stevenson, Stevens of Kirkwelpington, eh, and the Giddy Up Armies, Thomas Christian Scherf, Hazel Say, not Sale this time, Julius Scherf, Alice Reynolds of the Reynolds Mafia, Ripper in the Aylesbury rugby team. Yeah, all slaves to Rothschild, still and in all the great conflicts on all sides and the funding of their own families. Harold Dove, <laughs> yeah, pigeon post for Waterloo. Russell Say, yeah, the mind control experts of Tavistock, 1903 to 1975. Ruth Scherf, yeah, and that is the Dukes of Bedford and the Woburn Golf Club. Thomas Henry Burke, not in the peerage just yet. John Jack James Hartnett, Ruby er Evelyn Christensen, quite a dangerous name to choose. William Hartnett, Elise Elsie May Scherf. Can't mind remember what Alf Ar Ar Garnet's wife was called, Arthur George Snow. Yeah, the legendary newsreaders who are honorary professors at Durham University and get everything wrong on the London Bridge Terror, so that the whole of their news bulletin has to be taken off the air because it conflicts with the real cover-up by the MP for that region of why PC Palmer was killed, yeah, in the Charlton place that was the Siemens munitions factory, Alan Henry Crawford, private, 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 George Crawford, Mary Ethel Scherf, Eric Frederick George Crawford, I Isabel Maud, not Mountbatten, but we will soon get there, that's 1910, 1994 and the new name for Prince Philip since he murdered Mountbatten is Mountbatten. George Hindmarsh Sheriff, Mary Hinder, Albert John Donovan, yeah that's the Donovans that are in the syndicate and are proclaimed to be in there in those videos that proclaim that George Bush's family are totally crooked uh, and they've been launched into America to assassinate people like John F. Kennedy. And the Donovan is part of that story. And the Donovan is in the SOE. Dulcie, that's Special Operations Executive, which no longer exists on Jimmy Wales's Mind Control Wikipedia. George Hindmarsh Sheriff, Rita Ethel Crawford, Christian John Scherf Jack, my friends, and the Paulzels of Hitler's bloodline. And this is it too. So, uh, I don't know why we can't continue sweeping to the right wing. Uh, Murray John Bushy, Ray John Raymond Barnes, and the Barneville connections, Frederick James Scherf, Constance Winifred, again, Oprah Winfried, yeah, that's Von Winfred of Austria, 
and that is St Boniface before he was sainted. Yeah, and that's Oprah Winfrey and why that family intends to run for president because that is the papal residence and that is the sainting of St Boniface for launching false Christmas in Frankfurt where the Europeans said oh private 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 Henry Harry George Christian or John Scherf bottle checker George Heinmar Scherf Rita Ethel Crawford George Scherf Ruby Scherf Bertie Scherf just to let them know it's us Jesse B Alan Scherf Fred Scherf Maria Polly Goodwin I think we got here that's the banking emperor Mavis Edith Small and part of the Norse conquest from both Norway and Normandy at exactly the same time Joyce Edith Small Enid Small sorry Beryl Leila Small Gordon Wesley Small Peg Prisk <laughs> yeah uh, that's Wesley for Vaughan Wellesley that are the Dukes of Wellington and own vast estates in Ireland after they are forced to leave Austria for reputational reasons. Anne Small, uh, nay Wesley, Edward Gordon Small. You get the Duke of Wellington and the writ boards now which he's still on. That's the modern day parents of James Blunt's wife. Yeah, the three wise men couldn't be free of him, James Blunt. Frederick Arthur Small, Gwyneth Forster Small Loxton, and elsewhere on these family trees, you find if you interrogate those. Let me see if I can find that stuff about who's in the. There's the stuff about how Bush's family helped them rise to power. There's the honeycomb stuff. And there's the real George Bush and Hitler's bodyguards deathbed confessions. Yeah, there's Scozerny looking skinny as a rake. And there are the Bush families sitting with them uh, in 1937, I think it is. Circa 1938, holding Mother Scherf's hand. At the left is Martin Borwin. Uh, in front is Reinhard Galen, in back is Joseph Mengele, and his right is Scorzeni as a young man. Yeah, and there is the master plan and the arrival of the bankers, the first banks to arrive at their meeting place in Jico Island. That is the joke for Nelson Mandela that he was imprisoned on Jico Island, and he uses the sun god Sol Natalis Invictus's name Invictus as his nickname and all of it is quite sordid. Okay, and BC Forbes described the secret meeting between Republican Senator Senator Nelson W. W. Aldrich and six of the most powerful bankers in the world that this meeting had to be conducted in a secret clandestine island location indicates the level of deception, concealment and treason at work and Paul Warburg is the first one and then we can read, ah oh, shit and there's Hitler and Otto Skozerny yeah, claimed that the true identity of George H. W. Bush was George H. Scherf Jr. the son of Nikola Tesla Ill illegal immigrant, German born accountant. You get the naming of Nicola Sturgeon and Saint Nick in the Bible. Oh, he's not in the Bible, but he's in all the jokes for capitalism. Uh, and there's the CIA master's plan that was Gozerny, the Rockefeller connection, yeah, and all the usual banking dynasties, Union Sulphur Company. New York, George H. Sir, Tesla Senior, and let's get the bankers, Nikola Tesla, moving to Germany in 1905, Kaiser Wilhelm II, 
James Lowe, the reason that Alf Garnet rants about Coons is that Coon Lowe was one of these massive theft uh, warmongering banks that bankrupt all the participant countries and all of it is ignored completely at the land of the Fleas border control which is the uh, the Godfather movie too. Yeah, Harvard's Press. James Lowe could not have travelled and returned to the United States during 1892 unless he had swum upon his return trip. The first of his three voyages to Ellis Island from Europe on the Kaiser Wilhelm II arrived on October 13th, 1903. Isn't it funny? That's Kaiser Wilhelm. That is the uh, that is the cousin of the uh, uh, Queen Victoria's relatives, uh, and that is them going to war with each other. And Charlton was the Siemens factory at that time. Warburg's second arrival on the USS the SS Deutschland was similar to his first. Though still a US citizen in 1905, he was demoted to merchant. And we've got the other banks beginning to come in around them. There is Harry Sachs of Goldman Sachs, listed as a passenger, but unlike Warburg, he was not required to declare his destination or his address. In fact, of the 30 passengers listed, on page 293 of the Ellis Island database of ship and passenger arrivals, Warburg was the only passenger required to declare his destination. Yeah, the creature, creature from Jekyll Island, author G. Edward Griffin, not my boss Frank Griffin, uh, my colleague Frank Griffin, yeah, who was the chief master mason uh, and the top 100 Masons in global history. Yeah, that's Otago University just because they knew I was going to come there. Okay, so that's the launch of the banking stories uh, and that is on a thing called Arcanum Deep Secrets WordPress Hitler's body Bodyguard Deathbed Confessions Photos Support Claims that George H. Sheriff Bush Jr was the 41st president of the U uh, USA and it's by Don Nikloff and there are the pictures uh, but I wanted to find you the one there's Albert Speer entry page family tree of Elizabeth Pollard she's on the bloodline too for Bertie Wooster to wit, to woo. Professor Brian Pollard, the man that deserted me, yeah, and got me to write those huge review articles on healthcare in Africa, yeah, and then refused to publish them because they're so damning that we cannot share with the African nations after we've stolen all of their land and wealth, yeah, the rights to have babies safely. Yeah, the Bushes were Nazis. Huge hoax on America. Project 2. Part 2. There they are. Uh, and we still got batteries, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Reinhard Gellin. Uh, and where is the open sites that I had this morning? Hitler was a British agent by Greg Hallett. Uh, the Real Deal by James Henry Fetzer. And I can not find now those videos that were giving you that soundtrack and none of the story of the uh, real cousins that led both sides in the war is being allowed to be republished or discovered in Greg Hallett's massive output. And there's how Bush's grandfather, but that's not the one I want with the videos in it. And there's last Nazi Albert Speer who died in his bed, despite his conviction as a war criminal. 
Hitler's bodyguard. Ah, oh, this is it. Part four of four. So if we go back on that one, so there's Curious George, and li listen to this, you'll shut me down now. Curious George, the famous television mon monkey, was created by Alan Shalek and Margaret Ray. Shalek was murdered in 200, 2006, just three days before the Curious George movie was released. They are incredibly powerful and they want the world to know that that is still the case. He had been planning to expose the true identity of George H.W. Bush as the Curious George, son of inventor Nicholas, Nikola Tesla's Nazi accountant, George H. Scherr Sr. Okay, and you've got a series of videos in this thingy, and it shows you that Weinstein is one of the ancient mind control experts, and he, that's the Weinstein that is now the sex criminal against Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, and his dad is simply one of the members that runs the death camps with the Cameron family at McGill, and all of it leads to massive manipulation of minds and the launch of people called patsies that take the blame for every murder, because like Hitler in the war, they have been the victims of mind control centers. Yeah, isn't that terrible? And I've still got batteries. And there is the video. Curious George trailer. And it has no soundtrack. <laughs> and it will be overlapping with the soundtrack for... Uh, for... Uh, that earlier video by Greg Hallett and Jim Fetzer that we were listening to because I cannot now switch that off. I can't even access the tab upon which it is. Okay, so there's the Curious George trailer and it's not at all sinister until you see the killing of John F. Kennedy and who's involved in it. That includes, yeah, part four of four. Let's listen to this or watch it and I'll try and explain it because it's mostly explained in writing. There's the monkey, Tesla patents, Bush 40 what first president, CIA hit, part four. Curious George revealed, and this is the most politically potent one of those videos, this is not the one that shows you that Win Weinstein is in the syndicate. Oh, I wonder if the reason I can't so there are Hitler's bodyguards, CIA hit, yeah, let's see if we can make this full screen. And there is Hitler's bodyguard, yet yeah, there is Scozerny that came to the States with the Bush family, and there they are, George Bush Sr., Eric Berman of Florida, began dating a local, and there's their picture, and Miss Patricia Tom, my wife's uh, solicitor, is just like the lead female there. Little George Scherf Jr. was given the nickname Curious George by inventor, and there is the massive noses on Hitler's bodyguards. Yeah? And there's George Herbert Poppy Bush and the Nazi history of all of it, yeah, and it's not got a soundtrack now, and there's the killing of, uh, and they're claiming that Bush was actually the executioner of John F. Kennedy, and I would not be at all surprised, yeah, and the they can track the bullets through the heads of the people, and the man that is also like, uh, Donovan, part of this story, he is the MP for that region, and that is the real George W. Bush. That is Berman of Florida began dating a local girl, turned out to be Otto Scozerny, the 
legendary SS commando of World War II and there's the bullets going through them and that is his assassin and that is the launch of Germain Greer. Yeah, it's a tragedy that I've made this video with all of that nonsense uh, in front of it. Yeah, about Greg Hallett and the uh, capacity for me to find again the most sensational remarks that Greg Hallett ever made. Yeah, the shoebox photos so show the assassins Cozerni next to Prescott Bush, his wife Dorothy Walker Bush and their son George Herbert Walker, Walker Bush. Okay, and on and on it goes. Yeah, and there is another claim that that is the reincarnated Hitler and there is the legacy of the Bush family from the White House who ran the CIA and massacred all of the people in the Latin American stadia and there is the sun god uh, and his daily motions yeah, of keeping the earth clean and uh, producing the energy that allow all of us to live yeah, and that's where they should be but none of them are because all of the world and all of the shin means that America is in the hands of the British Empire which is a mafia operation Yeah, do you get it? That is the all the stories about that woman. Yeah, and I've never liked her as an actress. She made the uh, beautiful uh, Out of Africa movie with Robert Redford, and I now understand that we're being told, even if it's slightly encoded, that she, Germaine Greer, is a relative of the assassin of John F. Kennedy. Uh, and the name of the family that were supposed to be in that car with him that is the partner of uh, that is the partner of Donovan in the plot uh, and his name was his name was let's see Scorzeni, Borman, Mengele, Brunner, Ralph and that is Rolf in Sound of Music and there is the Galen uh, and Geli Rabal is a Rothschild uh, uh, granny or auntie of Alois Hitler Rothschild yeah, there's the Bergman in implications that the beautiful blonde actress is also in the syndicate ok let's see if we can find the name of the politicians that were involved. There's Wild Bill Donovan and the Gellens and Alan Foster Dulles was the politician for the Grassy Knoll where that person yeah, uh, murdered the president that tried to get the collateral gold that they were, had been stolen from the world back in the world owning hands uh, sorry, into the democratic hands with the robbed banks. I don't know if we're still. Oh, yeah, we're still. Nazi Gestapo. So, do you get it? That is Donovan that sings that everybody now carries the gun and the weapons that will destroy the world. Yeah? And that is some of the favourite singers in Scotland. Wild Bill Don 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 Donovan. And let's see if we can find the other uh, ones of these that allow us to see that uh, Weinstein and all of the stuff that's in the news at the moment is just to cover the mind control episodes that are the same story and the same set of YouTube videos. The real George W. Bush, so let's see if we can go back and get four or four so if we look for, I think it's on one of four, and that is the mind control episodes. Uh, and almost certainly this will cut out our internet access. So 